and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you are doing good. Now, we happen to be at the Kibo Lounge at Machame in Naguri. It's a beautiful day. It rained earlier on, but that's beyond us now. It's past us. And I am looking forward to my conversation today because she is back. She's putting out new music. I have Ugandan recording artist, powerful performer, Jackie Chandiru, joining me on Crystal One on One. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, you walked in with like crazy energy. I'm like, I'm all always right. like that. I'm always like that. For some, it's this positive energy all the time. Yes, yes. yes. Welcome to the show. Thank How you are you so doing? Much. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am fine. I, I am see, fine. I see. You know, I was just going back in my mind to quite a few times we work together. Mm. I'd be hosting an event. Yeah, and, and you'd I'm performing, be performing, yes. right? And we'd always have our little chit chat. Yeah. But once you hit the stage, it's like. Yeah. My goodness. So <laughs> My, the energy and you were always like like a hundred percent committed. That is that is that is the stage for me is 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 my office. Mm -hmm. I, I believe when, when people leave home and they go to office, they've gone to execute <laughs> an order. So, so that's an order. And, and I've, I, I always want to do my work or to execute my work and leave an impact. Mm -hmm. So that these people that I, that I stand in front of call me back. Okay. I never work just to get paid and go. That's interesting. Yeah. The stage is your office. So what yes. does that make the studio then? Uh, the studio is just the prep room, actually. The, really? Yes. So you love performing? I completely, I forget every single problem I have on this earth mm -hmm. when I'm on stage. So would you say it's almost like a, there's a switch? Yes. When yes. you, once you get on stage? Yes, it, it's, um, it's something that I almost can't explain. But one time, uh, um, Beyonce actually said when she gets on stage, she becomes Sasha Fierce. It's just somebody different. Mm -hmm. And three quarters of the world kept saying, that's a devil worshipper, that's a devil worshipper, because there's a demon that, that possesses her. But it's just something different. It's mm. just about, I believe it's just about a person taking their work really serious and being mm. very passionate mm -hmm. about it and passionate about delivering. Okay, well that explains why you were nicknamed the Beyonce of Uganda. I'm telling the you. The longest time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also, uh, a lot of people knew as the Queen of the Nile, yes. aka Queen of the Nile. Yes. So let's go back, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Music in your life, mm. when did this start? I, I, I think I started, I don't even know what age it was, because I didn't even know I could sing. I didn't think I could sing. What? what? I'm telling you. I just used to listen to Mariah Carey, and I could sing close, to, apart from her whistle notes. Yeah, those. Those ones. And I was not going to blow my eardrums up for anything. Mm -hmm. But I could maintain the key that, that, you know, and I was like, okay, maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. Then every time I'll go, we had this very long corridor in the house. Mm -hmm. And there's, 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 a, there's an effect in the studio called reverb. Mm -hmm. It's echoey. Mm -hmm. So when I would go and I would sing, I loved the fact that, it, that I felt the walls were just singing back mm -hmm. to me. So yeah. it just, I kept training myself using that, using that, 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 that effect okay. in the house. And then... Although my dad always told me I sounded like a crocodile. I've never had crocodile. Does that even make any sound? <laughs> I think he thought he was just no, teasing No, my, my dad cute. was a, a, a bully, actually. He, he loved teasing a me a lot. crocodile? Really? That's what he said. Wow. Like, he sounded like a crocodile. I'm like, I've never had crocodiles make any sound. They just open their mouths and they chill. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. So by the time I was, I was I, okay, I loved music, but I didn't think there was anything for me. How old were you? I was, I started when I was about five, I think, five, six. Oh my goodness. I would hear things and they would sound nice and mm -hmm. that's it. So what about in school? At uh, school, oh yes, school I used to sing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's my HSC where I started coming out more on stage. But my O level, I, that was never since our girls' school, there was no time uh. for that. But I, I, I was in the drama club and I became the, the president mm -hmm. of the drama club mm. in Navisunsa. So. I used to organize these productions and, and I would end up choreographing like the whole show. So I loved dance. I loved music. It was just, for me, it was just performing mm. the whole time for me. So, okay, we do know you as a dancer, a singer. Mm. What about as an actress? Did you ever no. dip your toe into those waters? No, no. Yes, I did act. I actually did act. I didn't even think I could. But the, the, the roles that I acted the best were the most, I don't even know if I should say them on camera. Um, mm -hmm. Bad girl. The bad girl. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those ones, I was very happy with them because I, I always loved... Well, I think you, I know the term, the bad... Mm. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. the one that disorganizes things and just still <laughs> looks innocent and pretty. Yeah, <laughs> those ones are executed well. The one that comes in with a tornado. Exactly. Disorganizes everyone. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't think, really think I could act, but I love the fact that, the fact that me being on stage performing turns me into a different person. Mm. Being in front of a camera and I've been briefed about a role I must play, then having to fit into that role was a new challenge that I completely loved as well. Mm -hmm. And I fitted quite well into it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now I remember back in the day, just before, again, like mm. we'd be off stage before you'd go on to perform, mm. and you always had these butterflies. Yes. And you'd be nervous. And I, yes. I, I always find that fascinating because once you're on stage, like you said, it's like a switch. You're mm. like this, you know, larger than life. But you still had the jitters yeah. and all of that. Do yes. you still experience yes. that even now? I, 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 because you just never know. Um, before you get on stage, for me, the first thing that keeps going through my head is I hope I don't fall in these heels. That's one. <laughs> and I hope the stage is compatible mm -hmm. with the, 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 the sole mm -hmm. of my shoes. And I hope the music doesn't skip. Mm -hmm. Or I hope the DJ doesn't mess up. Oh, I hope the mic doesn't go off. So the entire time you're yes, going through the, all the things the, that could that's go what wrong. I'm thinking. I'm just thinking about whatever it is that for some reason I, I I always have this pessimistic thing before I get on stage. Mm. So by the time I get on stage, I'm doing everything possible to counter that and mm -hmm. make sure it's perfect. You know, I'm on stage, but my mind is like my side eyes is looking at the dancers. Who is at the wrong angle? Who is this? I can make mistakes. Mm -hmm. They cannot make mistakes. <laughs> I love that. So it's the jitters definitely coming because I'm thinking of all these possible things that could go wrong. Mm -hmm. And in case all these things go wrong, this is all happening within like 10, 15 seconds. How am I going to, how will I handle this? How will I handle that? Man. So that's how, yes. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's yes. a lot. Yes. And then you're thinking about the audience and connecting yes. with the audience and, you're, you're and you're making sure you remember yes. all the moves. And, and you're thinking, okay, for this playlist, because I usually would send somebody first, I would ask before I come for a show. Mm. So which, uh, which, which, who is the client? What kind of people are there? Who is the, the funkiest person? Who is the person that causes the biggest star mm. in, 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 in the company? Uh, what kind of music they listen to? So I have to choose my songs before. Then on stage, when I, if there's people performing before me now, I have to start gauging. Maybe I should mm -hmm. take this song out and replace it with this. It's just like that. And wow. sometimes I switch playlists on stage. No! <laughs> yes, Why? so the person that is, I always have a person of mine that's handling my music. So the person, I have signals. So understands They have to, and without to. me having to say anything. Well, that's yeah. professionalism right there. That's, you know, what it boils down to. Because mm. not many people do that kind of research. Like, okay, who am I performing for? What music do yes, they really? like? Really? You know, Why wouldn't they I, do that? But think about it. I mean, you've, you've been on stage with so many yeah. other people. Do you always well, I, do that? I, well, I, I use those are questions I ask. The moment I'm, I'm booked for something, mm -hmm. I want to know the company. I ask like about six, seven different things. Mm -hmm. Then I will maybe come 30 minutes to, 45 minutes to to listen mm. to, to, to the, the, the people from backstage. What do they sound like? Oh. Are they a happy crowd? Are they, has the wine kicked in yet? Mm. Or do they need yeah. a lot of work? Are you going to have yes, to? Yes, am I going to have to go through like extra? Because sometimes there's, 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 there's audiences you go to and it's a piece of cake. Yeah, okay. From beginning to but end. But then there are also people complain that sometimes a Ugandan audience is, is the most difficult. They kind of just sit there and no, just that's, wait that's for you. But that's also because they don't want to work. Mm. I, I, I see quite a number of people that I believe are just lucky because their songs are big and people enjoy the songs, but they actually just stand on stage. It beats my understanding when you go on stage and you get off and you're not sweating profusely. <laughs> Why? Yes. You're supposed to work. Because you need work. to leave yes. it all there, right? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to work. So, so... It, it, it's, it, I believe it's just right now it's a lot of luck. Mm. It's way past uh, uh, before when you had to prove your worth. You had to prove why, for example, you're being paid this amount of money, why your name is as big as it is. You have to prove and you have to back it up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you said HSC, that's A levels, is when you really yes. started to come out and perform yes. on stage. This was in school or in holidays school. or. In, uh -huh. in, in school, because uh, now HSC, I was in an international school, okay. in Vienna College. So we would have these, these, these production days, mm -hmm. but there was all these people from like Tanzania, Kenya, different countries, and those people that like rap. Like there's, there's a lot of the boys like to rap. <laughs> and most of the girls liked dancing, dancing. For me, dancing was a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. But when I would, whenever I would hear people rap, rap, somehow this 
vibe just gets into me, the melody just comes in and I sing, sing, I sing along. Okay. And they'll be like, you can actually sing because I was shy, so shy. <laughs> So shy, this is a mixed school. I'm from a single school, mm -hmm. so this is a mixed school. And these are guys who are complimenting me like I would not sleep the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> I would be so excited. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's when we would have those, those small school, like they would give us this, like a whole Saturday evening. Mm -hmm. You guys just come and perform. Mm -hmm. And I was on those always with the guys for some reason. Mm -hmm. The girls, nada. So would you say that's a time that also helped you build your confidence? Um... Was that later? It, no, I've, I actually still even have confidence issues. You'll be very surprised. <laughs> I do. Okay. I would, I would step on stage most of the times, but I would not look. Mm. I would avoid eye contact. In, so in would you HSC. look like above yes. everybody? I either look above or I close my eyes and I'm so busy with my lyrics. <laughs> then when the guys are rapping, it's when I turn to them, like, like then I go to the back and mm. wait. Mm -hmm. That was me. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. don't want the individual I don't like, want eyes that. on me. Because should I see somebody looking, you know, with a squint, a slight squint, I'll be like, okay, I've messed up, I think. Oh. So. Okay, so do you prefer then, like, sometimes you have an intimate setting, mm. just a few people, then mm. sometimes, you know, you've done shows with thousands, mm. like huge numbers. What are you more comfortable with? Um, both, depending on how you handle them. Because mm. each, each crowd is supposed to be handled differently. Uh -huh. The way you handle the, the big crowds is different from the intimate crowd. The intimate crowd is more important in your vocal ability, mm -hmm. not in your dance. Mm -hmm. That one they could care much less because they, they, they just want to listen. They want to understand. Mm -hmm. So the intimate crowd is just communication yeah. between you and them. Because that's why you even have little stories yes. between the songs. Exactly. You have time to talk. You have time to joke around with, with the people. So the big ones is where you're there, you have to show... <laughs> Like, okay, apparently you're a performer, so perform and we see. Perform so, and yeah, we see. Perform and we see. <laughs> <laughs> if you fail, we shall test you off. So that one is harder work. Mm -hmm. But again, it's now that crowd that gives you the hype. And now you completely, I move from like my second switch to my sixth switch mm -hmm. with those ones. Yeah. Okay. So Blue 3. Yes. Yeah. We have to go back there. Yeah. <laughs> the girls. Yeah. How did you get together as a group? It was a competition. Um, and the competition placed yeah. you together? The, the, it was supposed to have three winners from each country, and uh, the three winners were brought, were put together in a group. Mm -hmm. So that's how we So were got you together. friends? Did you know each no, other before No, we that? didn't. We okay. didn't. I think I'd seen Cindy a couple of times on TV, mm -hmm. but I didn't know, 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 know her. Okay. Uh, Lillian, I met her there for the first time, but I was in line with Lillian, mm -hmm. and I had her sing. Mm -hmm. And before we was going into co to, to audition, and I was like, what am I even doing here? <laughs> oh, you know? man. And they put us all in the same group, like we're all in the hall, and you go one by one in front of the judges, and she bellows out this voice. Mm -hmm. And that's when I'm like, okay, I made a very huge mistake. Mm. But you're like, anyway, I'm still here, so let me do my thing. No, I couldn't go out, because like, I've come this far. I've been standing in line for like three hours. Mm. You know, I was just lucky that they decided to group us and they're like, okay, fine now, so you guys are going to come in soon. Others, I would have been out for six hours. I was like, well, I've come this far, I can as well just sing and go. But by that time, I already marked, had a strategy for my first audition. Oh. So I was like, if I don't go through with, with, with Zwei and Anthony Morgan and these, these South African, mm -hmm. the judges, I want Steve Jean. Okay. Yes. So you had a plan. I had a plan right but from In from that home. plan was there? anything about the, a girl group being part of the no, group? No, no, no. What I didn't think I was going to win, actually I didn't even think I'll go through the first audition. Okay. That's the truth. So my plan so was... was an opportunity just to meet him? Like I had dreamt of Steve, working with Steve Jean since, um, what year was it? I think I was in senior, senior four, three or four. Oh wow. And I was in the kitchen, I was cooking for my dad. And I had fever. He was on Sanyo FM. Mm -hmm. And I had fever. You give me fever and I can. And I was like, wow, this is the production. And then they're like, he's a Ugandan. I think he, had, he, was, been, he was staying in the States or something. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited. And when I later on now fast forward mm -hmm. to like years later, then I, I hear he's going to be the producer handling. I'm like, that means he's going to be there for the audition. So I'm, my first audition is going to be fever. Because mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to manipulate this guy. <laughs> So I'm, if, if <laughs> these guys don't want me, he's going to call me. And I'm going to sing his song way much better than he did. Okay. Yes. Oh that was my God. plan. 
I had it all worked <laughs> that out. That was a whole strategy. No, even back then, um, mm. Steve had this attention to detail that was, yes. I feel, even right now, we see it in a lot of the yes. productions he does. But it's kind of crazy. He's, so you no, were he's like, always been, he has always been crazy. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and I was the one person that was always welcome in the group. I was <laughs> always welcome to his craziness. And Cindy and Leon would be like, seriously? <laughs> And I'm like, you guys, you don't understand. I'm the only one that's excited. Then I realize it's just me that I have to keep quiet. And so I'm like, calm. okay, I have to calm down. Or else they'll think, you know, otherwise. But mm -hmm. that was my strategy. And my first, my auditioning song was Fever mm -hmm. by Steve Jean. Mm -hmm. And he was, I remember he was talking to Zwei Bala. Uh -huh. He was talking to Zwei Bala. So when I started singing, he made like one sentence, then he stood and looked at me. I'm like, got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Like, now let's go. <laughs> I took the song. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes. And when I noticed I had his attention, I'm like, it's fine. If, if, if the three of you don't want, don't want to take mm -hmm. me through, he's going to call me. Mm. I want him mm. to call me mm. after this. Mm. Look at you. Planner. I'll see you. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, like if, uh, for people who don't know your journey with mm. the three, how long were you together? Um, Blue Three as a group was almost 10 years, I think, mm -hmm. seven to 10 years, but uh, th there was changes within that time because Cindy left the group, then we got Maya mm -hmm. into the group, so there was that, but Blue Three was about 10 years. Okay. Yeah. It must have been very difficult, especially I feel like you, you kind of get your rhythm, you mm. kind of understand each other, mm. and then she left and you got a new member. Was there a bit of friction at that time? Was it difficult or was it just a smooth transition? No, it wasn't smooth at all. Mm. We was used to each other. We was used to, to bickering and, and pulling each other's wigs off, uh, <laughs> Miss Cindy and Lillian. So we're thinking, is this girl going to be okay if I get angry and I pull off her hair, mm -hmm. her wig mm -hmm. or something? <laughs> or is she going to have a the problem? Visual, yes. just God is like... So we're just trying to think, like we always used to do this, this, this and this. And is she going to do it? Mm. You understand? And then we're thinking, okay, so me, uh, Lillian is a loud mouth. Sometimes I'm quiet, but sometimes I get loud. So mm. is she going to join in? Is she going to be cool with us? Yeah. Or like, is, I don't know, she, she, she looks like a baby. Is she going to be able to work yeah. nonstop? Like the she way we really were? She was really young when she joined, right? Yeah, well, no, I think she was just small. Really? We were probably, well, well, I'm not sure, by the way. Because the one thing I never ask is like, people's age, cause, <laughs> women's age, because I never tell. I mean, I'm 12 years old, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I'm just 25, so. Very fine. Mm. Okay. Till further you. notice. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. So that's interesting because mm. I know that she had to come in, find her footing, mm. and people loved Cindy. They loved mm. you as a group. And it was kind of hard for her, I think, in the beginning as well. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was hard because people were not kind mm. to her. Mm. People were... Um, Actually, I think that's what now actually brought us together because we now fell into this, 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 I don't know whether I should call it maternal mode. Mm. I don't know how, uh, that oh, this, we, we, we needed her. to protect her mm. because yes, she was, she was dancing before, I think, obsessions and mm. other, but it's, that's different when it's, it's almost like a backup. Yeah. There's other people who are being fronted. But now this is each of us, you stand, much as we are a group, mm -hmm. each of us has, an, has to have an identity. Yeah. So people would, would hurl insults at her. Okay, they would hurl insults at, at the, rest, the rest of us as well. Yeah. But you see, you're going to hurl an insult to me. I'll just look at you yeah. and say... You developed a yeah. skin by then. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Um, she has to fit in, that one we know, mm -hmm. but we need to protect her because what she's going to find is not going to be simple because people still had Cindy mm. in their minds. So, so it wasn't easy for her in the start. Yeah, I can imagine. Mm. So you've been in the game for a minute mm -hmm. and you kind of started out when we didn't really have the venom. I feel like mm. it's venom on social media now. People yeah. just, sometimes are just nasty, unnecessarily mm. so. I mean, you're talking about back then, yeah, there was mm. some kind of, you still get negative feedback, but mm. now I feel like it's gone to the next yeah. level. The, the, the freedom, the freedom is, is, is a little too much, and some mm. people do not, um, I don't think they understand the level of impact of the words that they speak. Mm. They may find it funny, or there's just some people who enjoy doing that, but what they don't realize is there's actually people that go back home and cry. 
there's actually people that are going to fail to do something for the next two days after that happens and they are going to go into something, for example, to try and seek comfort. Yeah. But you see, those people don't notice. And then when they f get to realize that this person, this has happened to this person, they will instead hurl more insults. Mm. And, and, and that's it. So the, the it's freedom. It's a weird cycle. Eh? I know. It's, 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 I personally believe it is stupidity. Mm. I'm sorry. I don't <laughs> know if it's okay to say it on camera. Yeah. But I believe it's stupidity. There is, why in God's name do you want a person to care about your feelings, but you don't care? about other people's feelings. You're willing to stand and say the most annoying and hurtful things mm -hmm. to a person just because the person appears on TV slightly more than you do and you think you cannot be found. Yeah. You understand? We, we do have quite a breed of vloggers yeah. who go for that. It's, it's, for it's that. crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, we'll talk about that later, but there was, there was a blogger who insisted on something about me and I was so hurt mm -hmm. because this blogger knew nothing completely nothing about me didn't mm -hmm. bother to ask and this is a and person once speaking he speaks, from this yes. place of authority yes and once mm -hmm. he speaks literally everybody's going to believe what he says there is nothing you can do to change people's yeah. minds once he speaks mm -hmm. so it's it's the, the social the freedom i believe it's slightly too much yeah yeah and um but i think it, in Uganda they say amatwaina okwe fuga as well mm -hmm. don't just do things just for the sake of maybe making fun on social media or having a name as being a, a, a disa or mm -hmm. you know whatever it is that that you may take but put people's feelings into consideration the same way if somebody did something to you yeah. and you expect them to apologize think about another person absolutely yeah. absolutely now i remember when i first heard about um some of the issues that you were having mm. and later on you came out and talked about the fact that you were having terrible back pain mm. again it took me back to your mm. performances and mm. how you would put in all that energy and i'm like mm. how i mean I've, I've had back pain issues mm. um that come also sometimes with having children yes that yes. happens but i was just like what you would get on stage you would mm. put that kind of performance up and you had back pain mm. I did. My God. But at that time, um, I, I was on this painkiller. Mm -hmm. So you would not feel anything. It's mm -hmm. only when I get back to the car, like when I rest, the moment my body is now coming down, mm -hmm. then the pain kicks in. Then, it would kick then I in. have to recharge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that was the cycle. That was the cycle. Okay. After I got the, the, the back issue. But before that, and the funny thing, sometimes it would happen, but even when the pain would get so much on stage, you, you cannot compromise your mm -hmm. performance. Mm -hmm. you, it, it, I've just never had, because I've been to stage before, um, I think it was at Sheraton, 30 minutes, actually I delayed uh, us being on stage because I was from, I had malaria mm -hmm. from a drip. Yeah, yeah. And that day we had to all wear like very like long sleeved shirts. We had to change like the costume immediately because I had a cannula. <laughs> And I don't even remember how I did that show. Like, Lucky. no, I just remember walking. I was bent, but when a moment I got in uh, the, the door, out of the car, the door, I stood straight. Because Steve, you have got to. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. You walk like nothing has happened. I could not even see anything. But we pulled the show off. It's, when, and it's only when I entered the car, the door was shut, mm -hmm. that I collapsed. Okay. So the, the times when I would have these back issues, sometimes they would happen when I'm on stage, but you cannot compromise. So sometimes I would over, um, I would end up slightly injuring myself mm, more. That's what I'm thinking. Yes. But, you know, I never, I, I, as long as I left people happy, that the pain was nothing compared mm -hmm. to, to just seeing people happy and for also me. And it's something that you loved. Yeah. It was your happy place as yes. well. Yes. So did the people around you know that you were going through this? Um, they didn't. Okay. Um, partly, you tried to keep it private? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, partly it's because of the way I was brought up. Um, home. My mom, right from a very young age, you know, I learned how to cook when I was, like, I started learning how to cook when I was like six years old, <laughs> six, seven. Mm -hmm. My mom is Muganda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she, we started learning. She used to teach us from a very young age how to cook, mm -hmm. how to, to clean, basically to keep a home. You know, because sometimes she would say, okay, fine, I'm, I'm going to the market. I'm, she would just leave the place messed up. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm coming back in 20 minutes. And I expect this And I be... expect this. You want it? So we had to. 
that's how I was brought up. Mm. So there's things that would happen at home. She never actually likes me to even talk about it. And I always used to ask her why. Like maybe why, why, why don't we call the cops or something, you know, because I used to watch TV. And she would always be like, you never take your dirty clothes and wash them in front of people. Yeah. You will never see me being sick and go and tell everybody that I'm sick. One day when you grow up, <laughs> you will understand. Yeah. Well, that was a tough lesson though, yeah. I think, with, with just the yes. fame that came with it. Yes, mm -hmm. so it was, it was, and they're not gonna, you're not gonna hear it, it that, that other side, like, it's a problem. You're gonna hear it like, oh my God, can you imagine, like people are laughing about this. So it's, it's it was just, you rather keep everything to yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was my that theory. Was your theory. <laughs> yes. So that's 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 why I kept everything mm -hmm. private. Okay. And you actually managed to keep it private for, for a long right. time. A long time. Yes. When was it when did you get to that point where you're like, My goodness, mm. how did I get here? Because I know that you even went through a period where you stopped performing, stopped mm. recording music, but then certain things happened. Things um, I didn't expect to happen happened and I just met the resolution. But I'm not going to lie, just before that, there's still times when, yes, as much as I was in a different country, I would still think about the feeling of having pethidine in my veins, in my body. I still had it. Mm -hmm. And I, it was at the back of my mind. If I get the chance, I'll use it. Really? Yeah. So it was just a matter of you didn't have it? It was a seven-year addiction. Seven years. So it's not, it's not something that is going to just leave you. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this in a bad way, but rehab actually made my situation worse. Yes. Wow. How come? Yeah. How come? Um, in the start, it wasn't so bad. But you know, when I kept relapsing, uh, you need to realize it's also not easy for, for, for that's why you sometimes you go to places and the health workers don't treat the patients well. They get tired. Okay. They get tired. So them being tired is not because they've come from home tired. It's possible they've come tired from home. Mm -hmm. But it's also not easy to have like a whole house of addicts. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. Each one has... Um, Different issues. In Uganda, we have in their own way. Like whatever it is they were abusing has mm -hmm. messed them up in yeah. their own way. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy. So time comes when you're doing it just as a job. Oh. That is one. Okay. There is no way you're going to take me from using 20 ampules a day to nothing immediately. Because mm -hmm. I think and most effective yes, they're supposed yes, to slowly they're supposed to wean slow, you off. Yes, they're supposed to wean you off. You don't just take a baby off breast milk. Yeah. You win the baby. Yeah. Kidogo, kidogo, pole, pole, until the, 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 the baby no longer remembers the breast. Mm -hmm. So they would cut you off and you have got to go through two to three weeks of Terrible withdrawal control. symptoms. Mm -hmm. And those are, actually that's the reason as to why it's hard for addicts to just stop. Withdraw mm -hmm. symptoms. They are so, so uncomfortable. You cannot even believe. You mm -hmm. can't even start to imagine. Mm -hmm. A person that's in labor will get into labor for maybe six hours and that's done. <laughs> yes. And then you'll be fine. You know, they'll give you painkillers and you're fine. Withdrawal symptoms are literally two back to back. Mm -hmm. And they've taken you off this drug immediately. Yeah, that's not how it's supposed you, to be. You, you, you can't, you, you just can't do that. There's peop a person can die. Mm -hmm. A person can actually die. So... There's methods that were used that, that were not good. I didn't know until I, I came out and I did research on some of these things. And on top of that, the, the, the environment, I mean, it put me in a nice environment, put a pool, put something, so I don't really miss being out. Mm, so you're not just staring yeah. at walls and stuff. Walls and, 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 you know, you, there's, it got to a point where actually I was almost sexually harassed. Yes, because you know there's all sorts of addicts there. So, so there was a time I yes, unsafe as well. It was unsafe. One, you're not supposed to keep somebody in rehab for more than ninety days. I was there for like a year plus. The first time was ninety days, the second time was longer, the last time was a year and God knows what. 
You know, you cannot do that to me. So there's a time when I was just, it was just a female and the rest were guys and they were like four sex addicts. Yes. And I'm the only female in there. So that, that, that wasn't, you know, there's certain precautions, there's certain things. I just got traumatized yeah. in that place. I, I, I escaped once because I could not take it anymore. Mm. I could not take it anymore. And then when I was finally brought back, I was literally locked in an eight by six, a tiny room. I actually got claustrophobia because of that. Oh. You know, mm. I was locked in this room from 6 p.m. until whatever time they feel like opening for me with just a bucket to ease myself. The person who took me out of the country had sent him and he asked me, what is it that you really, because I would not, I, I'd stopped talking. I could not, I was in so much pain. You know, I had all these, these, these other diseases because of side effects of, of the drug and I could not even get a Panadol because they were like, no, for your addiction is painkillers. So we are scared about giving you a painkiller, but I'm like, I'm in pain. And they're like, no, sorry. Yeah. And this person comes and says, Jackie, what is it that you want? He was asking me questions. I was barely talking. How are you fine? He asked questions on quiet. And he's like, what is it that you really want? I kept quiet. He asked the second time, please talk to me. I said, do you want me to tell you the truth? Mm -hmm. If you leave me here for one more week, you're going to find a dead body. And I was dead serious mm -hmm. because I was tired. I was completely and that's tired. You're like I can't live this way. No, I mean it's. You, I, would, I was already starting. You know, I was. I was reading the Bible, so I knew I just needed to say a lot of prayers and apologize to God in advance, because the truth is, I could not understand why God was allowing me to go through this. I just. I couldn't understand. It got to a point where I blamed Him a lot. Actually, that time tested my faith mm. so much. So it got to, are you tearing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, it just, it just got to that point where I, I you know, God is love. Hmm. We've grown up knowing that God is love. But what love is this? Yeah, what is this? Why what, yes, am I going to What this? love is this? Like, like you're seated on a chiller on your throne. And I am going through this. I am in a eight by six, a tiny room like this with bed bugs, should I say? You understand mosquitoes? That's it. That makes no sense. I, I that can is hear it. you, but it makes no sense because I was talking to someone who's mm. a recovering alcoholic and mm. he was telling me the thing about rehab is someone can go to rehab so many times, but yeah. until they are ready it to is make you. the changes. Yes. And more importantly, rehab removes everything. Yes. But once you're back out, once you're back world, out, everything, you, everything is there. You mm -hmm. understand? Everything is there. You have to learn to live with all the temptations. That's, that's the whole thing. You see, rehab was, yes, I learned about triggers and, and what, what, but you see, sit me down and find out where did this start from? If I was using pethidine, why did I stick to pethidine? Ask me to explain, gain my trust, ask me to explain to you, then start treating me. Don't treat me with locking me up in, in, at 6 p.m. I am a bleating adult, <laughs> bleating married woman, mm -hmm. and you're locking me in a tiny room, in a tiny room. You know, there's addicts that they would bring there, that the, the patients they would bring in, and when they start throwing tantrums, when they realize they're going to be left there, they would be caned, whipped. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you. What kind I, of methods I, I, are yes. these? No, I know. I, mean, I personally know after they, they watch this, they're going to look for me. But you see, I'm going to ask, is it a lie? Mm -hmm. First of all, the next time I come out, I find people are discussing my health on YouTube. Where is the doctor-patient confidentiality? Where is it? How, how in God's name do you even start discussing me without my consent? How? That is my medical history. You're not supposed to discuss it that. Yes, private. it is out there that I'm an addict. Leave it at that. Don't say that now the addict has this wound, she has that. No, that's none of people's business. You know? Because I walk out and then people are asking, so how do you think I feel? Yeah. You know, you're taking away the little bit of confidence and self-esteem that I have. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's what I went through. So rehab actually just gave me more issues, mm -hmm. I believe. And it just, I, 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 if you're, not, if you're gonna have, to have a rehab, you need to just teach the addicts 
to self re to, to realize mm. that they can actually let this go. There was out of about what three or four counselors, there was two, at least who used to speak sense, and I used to actually take I part. I thought that is part and parcel of the whole process, oh, the therapy well, where you like, go back. Like I told you, people get tired. It's not like sometimes these jobs are well paying. <laughs> I believe. You know, that's why you can go to a hospital and you get yelled at. That's You're, being gracious, yes. I'm telling you. <laughs> so for me, me, I'll put it straight. Like ever since I, I recovered, I always tell people I speak different now. I will call a sped a sped. I'm not going to try to cover up things nice. Because yeah. if something isn't right, I'm going to say it. Because mm -hmm. so many, you're going to find people being taken to that, that place, for example, that I was. And what if, what if somebody dies? What if they go through something? Well, I was just lucky. I was lucky and I still count myself lucky because later I learned God will not make you go through something that you cannot overcome. Mm -hmm. But mine was, mine was a, was a lesson. It, there was a purpose for me to go through that. One, people needed to know that even a celebrity is a human being. Yeah. I make mistakes. You will see me we with perfect do. hair. Everyone. By the way, people believe that. They don't even believe the yeah. let's go to the toilet. Yeah, you don't Yet, have problems. Exactly. Everything Yet if I go to the toilet, I'll tell you, let's agree, you're not going in for two hours. <laughs> I'm even worse, you understand. So they don't believe, they see you with the perfect hair, perfect makeup, but you have got flows. Yeah. You actually cry. Mm -hmm. You get sick. It's mm -hmm. just that there's certain celebrities who will get sick, but will still stand on stage. Yeah. And you won't even know it. Thank so you. that was one. <laughs> That was one, and, and that was the first lesson. And the second thing is, this can happen to anyone. Mm. I mean, I had everything, because people used to, there are people who would literally insult me, like, they never understood. They never understood. And I'm thinking, is that the only thing, you're so myopic and narrow-minded, is that the only thing that people can be addicted to? Mm. You know there are people who are addicted to phones? Yeah. Screens? No, even you talked food, about sex. Mm -hmm. Sex. Alcohol, anything, you can be addicted to. There's so much and Stealing, there's kleptomania. Yeah, kleptomania. <laughs> there's people who just cannot stop stealing. And for no reason whatsoever. You know, you see me here sitting and I'm just like this. Mm -hmm. And I just pack this. I'm like, <laughs> for what? <laughs> so there's so many things. There's yeah. so many things that people, people are just so short-sighted when it's addiction in Jaga. Mm. They automatically and it's believe. literally, like, when I got to be with, like, other addicts, I got to realize that even in Jaga, it's almost like nothing. <laughs> like, it's a minor issue. <laughs> Seriously, because people what? are addicted to things. Yeah. People are addicted to things, and there's some other, so mm, exactly what is that? And they're explaining, now you see this one is, is a mixture of this, it has this, it has that. And I'm like, okay, uh, so how do you consume it? And I didn't, I just, I didn't know all these things. That's also just a scary thought that you can go into rehab when you don't know much and you come out. You come out and you with know, all this yes. other information that you can't take exactly. advantage of. Exactly. Wow. And I've used it like, like, like till death. Mm -hmm. I see, I see a lot of people making mistakes with, with, with addicts, but I just, when I finally get to read about these things and I'm like, how can you even do something like this? How can you literally give an addict this? You see, the, the one thing you need to know about, um, I'm a recovering addict because medically I've not recovered. Mm -hmm. But as a person, I know I'm a recovered person. Mm -hmm. But medically I'm a recovering addict. Mm -hmm. So there's just things, at that time when the person is still doing that, you cannot, for example, give a person a phone because the phone is a lot of money. By that time, I'm counting ampules oh of peso I I'm like, this one, if I can get like 200,000, oh, and actually, even 200, if the phone is like 200,000, I can sell it for 50,000. Because I'm like, these are two ampules. Wow. And that's and, all you yes, think about. Yes, and that's all you think about. You don't think about the fact that you've literally um, robbed yourself mm. of something important. You will need this phone after it wears off yeah. your head. Mm -hmm. You don't think about that. Yeah. You, there's, there's, there's just things, there's decisions that, that we make, we become so myopic. Mm. We don't think about tomorrow, we think about here, now, where is my next fix? How can I get it? And the one thing about addicts is they are liars. I have never lied so much in my entire life. I had to cut it down when I recovered to only Saturday between 2 and 3 p.m. That's the time I lie. Even when I'm <laughs> speaking the truth, don't believe anything I say. 2 and 3 p.m. on Saturday. <laughs> I pray for you. 
But you know, I don't have, I'm never in a situation where I have to lie. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's so crazy, though. No, I'm no, but serious. you're right. I mean, they lie you, about the, the, um, thieves, anything. liars, and everything, and you wonder what happened. But anything, anything, like you will lie, and for some reason, our lies are so gullible. Like you, 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 you believe them. Mm -hmm. We somehow have a way in which we can combine fiction and reality to a normal person, and we tell, I tell you something, and you're like, yeah, actually. <laughs> Then you pull out the money and you give me. And that's it. I won't even say bye. I will dis actually you just feel the wind, the breeze. The oh, I think Jackie was here at one point. Because <laughs> I'm rushing to the pharmacy. <laughs> I'm going to the pharmacy. So that's, that's, that's just it. Do you I think part of the issue in this country is the fact that so many things are available uh, over the counter. Um, like it was easy for you to get the pain? It was not easy meds? for me to get them, by oh. the way. It's just that, uh, right, I think after my issue, they became mm. tight on pethadine. Ah. Because my, my issue got, to, like, I was arrested, by the way. My mom arrested me. <laughs> I still haven't forgiven you, mom. <laughs> my mom arrested me. So, so after my issue, because my issue was like here, there, I go to president's office and what, so they hadn't, oh. NDA hadn't. Mm on pethadine okay. but you see at that time when you would go to to the pharmacy and you ask for it of course they would ask for a prescription and when they see you fumbling trying to find an excuse they know but there are some who would be tight mm. and they're like sorry if you don't have a prescription we're not going to give it to you but then there are those who can tell this is an addict <laughs> she's going to do anything to get that ampule mm. so they will find an excuse they'll they'll know that you're going to because we used to work on wilson that place is full of pharmacies. Mm -hmm. They have the pharmaceuticals, those places that sell the stuff. So they just go following you. Then somebody comes and says, how much do you have? You want pethadine? Mm. You want the one, the one for one? How's about us if yes. you had some kind of fixer somewhere? They were there. Mm, but you know, there. yes, that is, that is something that would, at that time would go for 2,000. Mm -hmm. But then when they know you're an addict, it's going for 10,000 an ampule. Mm. And then time came when I was buying just one ampule for 50,000. <laughs> So I'm using 20 ampules in a day. 20, 20 plus. Good Lord. So that was, I was within that mm -hmm. 1 million, 1 1.5 literally daily. That's crazy. So people, there's people that read and, and imagine, I imagine if it was happening at this time with the economy, the way things are right now, mm -hmm. it, would be, it would be easy. Cause you also put yourself in their shoes. These guys have to earn a buck. They need to make some money. Mm. Much as they know what they're doing is wrong, yeah. it can destroy somebody's life. But w w right at that time, there's this time in life when you have to also think about yourself. You're like, you go make the choice. If one was decided to die, the person didn't see her go. I have to take it's care of my to kids. You. I have to pay for I got a kid, I yes, have I have to... to do this. If you're going to give me that money because I know you need this thing, mm -hmm. then it's fine. <laughs> That's crazy. That's how it is. Yeah. I've actually left my passport somewhere yeah. sometime. <laughs> Yes. I left my passport in exchange for a box. Yeah. But you understand, you weren't yourself. I completely, yeah. You I, were I, not yourself. Yeah. You know what you're doing is wrong. You know you're causing pain mm -hmm. to the people around you, but you just can't stop. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. This is just the thing that is bigger. You're not strong enough for it. Yeah. That's why whenever I speak, I always call addiction a demon. It's not a spirit. Yeah. A spirit can be cast one, two. I can cast one out myself, a spirit. <laughs> but a demon is sent by the commander mm. in truth. No, He's the one that sends it. What you said about you hurt the people you love, the ones who you were there You see the you. pain. Mm. You see you are causing them pain. My mom shed tears in front of me, but the only thing in my mind is, when are you going to stop crying so I can go and inject myself? That's, that's how you think. Mm -hmm. So this is just something that, that takes over you in a way that you just don't understand. It's later when I decided to wake up and when I was seeing all these scars on my body, I was like, you had one of the most beautiful bodies, literally. Even when you didn't know what people told you, what have you done? So throughout the process, you, you weren't noticing? You weren't, it wasn't I didn't registering? care. I, if I felt pain, I mean, I was going to use the painkiller and the pain would go. And then I would be, psh, mm. okay. So you left and went to Nairobi. Yes. 
And that was the time. I went. For... I did Europe first, then Nairobi. Okay. Was that a time for recovery for you? Mm. Also being mm. away from. Friends? Yeah, I, I, because one of the biggest things that that actually fueled the relapse is a lot was the fact that I would come out of the 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 hospital, and, you know, I used to read a lot, and I would go through all these stories, all these false stories, and they would put me down. I'm the kind of person who will go on stage, like I told you in the start. I will look, the moment I see somebody squinting a little, <laughs> but everybody else is happy, one person is squinting, it will bother me. Yeah. It will affect me mm -hmm. the whole time. So I always read, and I'm reading all these false stories, and one thing I hated was people telling lies about me. Mm -hmm. And I always had this thing, why don't you just ask? Why do you have to go and make up, and, and you know, I'm looking at this, and there are so many views, on YouTube, on this blog, and I'm like, you're doing this just for the sake of views? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't even think about whether you're telling people the truth? You don't even think that there's kids that, that, that have been looking up to me all this time? Do you even know what you're imparting in their heads about me? So I was like, anyway, since you've said, I, that I, it's I like this. that you're calling them out because yeah. they speak like they were right there in the room with you. Yeah, like there are some people <laughs> who spoke recently, you're like lying. they signed a death certificate. <laughs> <laughs> and they got their nose. I was happy. I was, I was happy. I was like, yeah, so such, such things, you don't know what, by the time you're an addict, mentally, mm. you're weak. Mm. Anything, anything, you're susceptible, you're susceptible to anything. Anyone can come and tell you something and you will go with it. Anyone yeah. can come and tell you a lie and you'll go to it because already you're weak. Mm. You know, the dopamine, your head is just producing dopamine to make you think all you actually need. If this person is going to tell you this and it's going to help you in some way, to get what it is that your body needs, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But all these times I came out, I came out, I think like two times and I read I was dead. How many yeah. times? Four times. And I thought I was RIP. I'm like, Jesus, you're that tired of me. <laughs> like you're really that tired of me, rest in peace. You're even killing me off in the media. Yeah, like I'm dead. Like, like I wonder these... why people do that, that still baffles me. Well, I, I just like I told you, I speak my mind these days. They're just idiots, mm. period. That's just plain idiotic. You do not know. There's a way in which you're supposed to treat an addict or a recovering addict, should I say. Yeah. You just don't mess with, with their mental health. Mm. That's, that's a very... People commit suicide. People die. I attempted suicide six times. So. And you're here. Yes, in your words. And you're back, putting out new music. Yes. Uh -huh. So when did you feel, because at some point you said, oh, no, I'm more of a motivational speaker right now. I'm not really mm. doing music. Mm. So when did it start to scratch you again? The itch was back. You know, when you're born to do something, mm -hmm. uh, then it just has to happen. Mm. If I'm going to speak, a lot of the times when I would speak, I would uh, have like comments amongst the comments. There would always be that one comment that... Yeah, she's gonna relapse. Just give her like three weeks. You need to away. stop reading those comments. I'm sorry. I can't help it. <laughs> I can't help it. But I usually have pseudo accounts where I also give them back. <laughs> I'm not going down easy. I love we it. go together. Uh -huh. So it's 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 then that I realized if I, I'm not gonna, you know, people said I could not sing anymore. My voice was gone. I could not perform, and I could not compose. Mm. So I'm like, okay. So let me use the weapon, the thing, the one thing you think that I lost. Let me use it against you. And I, I just went back into the studio. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, let me show you. Yeah, yeah, let I'm me give you, let me, let me give you something that a death certificate is signed, mm -hmm. but <laughs> something that's still alive. I'll, I'll give you something to, to think about, to ponder. I mean, if I was able to do it, then you can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was in the company of, of the stars. I had the money at that time, but I still messed up. So if yeah. I got out of what I went into, then you definitely can. Mm -hmm. There's and and the the song, um, under New Number Two Five Six, the new management company right now, mm -hmm. is uh, I'll be okay. Yes, that's it's strictly about my life. Okay. It's it's just my story. But I I I made sure I was in a way that it can apply to anybody. Mm -hmm. If you just got dumped yesterday, I watched I mean, it. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. okay. It exactly. seems like heartbreak. It's, yes, it I'll has be, heartbreak. I'll be then, okay. You're yes. not necessary. Yeah. But then again, in life, no matter what comes your way. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely. When when I say it's not necessary, it's these comments that I read, you know, people's <laughs> opinions. Yeah, I'm not leaving anybody out. I'm giving everyone mm -hmm. their dose. So it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. If you get dumped and your friends are laughing at you, you'll never get a man, blah, blah, blah. Their opinion is not necessary. It's God. It's God's willing. And if you lose your job, your if you lose your job, you never know God is preparing you for something that's greater. Mm -hmm. You know, you lose your husband, you lose... You lose, a, God forbid, a child. You lose somebody. Mm -hmm. You just never know. There's going to be a better replacement. So there's always a reason for everything that happens in our lives. And just know it is always for the greater good. Mm -hmm. Although things, sometimes the journey is hard, yeah. but it's hard for a reason. To see if you can be able to withstand the result. And that's the yeah. most important thing. I accepted my mistake and I can assure everybody that I am still paying the price. Mm -hmm. For my mistakes, it's I wear jumpers roses, right? at yes, I wear jumpers at 3 p.m. when the sun is, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't want to be nicely dressed, but I'm like I said, mm -hmm. I'm paying the price. When you throw stones at a glass house, it breaks. When you harm, when you do bad to God's temple, you must pay the price. You mm -hmm. have got to pay Him for messing up His temple. I messed up His temple. I accept the price I'm paying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I'm excited you're back in the studio. Thank you're you. doing what you were born to do. Yes. Born to do. So, yes. can we expect some new music? I mean, what have you been working on? What are we looking forward to? New music, completely new music. Uh, mm -hmm. A new EP coming out mm -hmm. and uh, some other surprises. Of course, I'm not going to say, though my mouth is itching like a problem. <laughs> But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just back to studio where it is um, on, on social media. I do have a lot of, I call them patients. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that I counsel, that I speak to, when uh, people who are trying to recover, and I talk to them. But, like, for the one thing I always tell them is I can just talk to you. You can ask me if this, you feel, this feels okay, that feels okay, but it's you to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So I can only guide you yes. to you making that decision. But I cannot make, yes, decision. I cannot mm -hmm. make you stop using God bless. So, thank yeah. you for that You're welcome. and thank you for the new music it's so good to see you thank you so much for having me oh, yes <laughs> it was <laughs> lovely having you thank you so much